Hey everyone, it's Lisa. In today's video, I want to show you a quick little project that highlights the colors of our 2010, I'm sorry, 2012, 2014 in color markers. Now, I didn't use the markers for this project. I used the classic ink pads, um, but I do want to show you how the colors, uh, how good they look with one another. So I used the cardstock from that same um, line, the 2012-2014 in colors. That's a nice thing about our products is that you can find your designer series paper, your cardstock, your markers, your your inks, and they all coordinate together. And I also used um, our 2012-2014. Uh, in color designer series paper pack and you can see all the different patterns it's double sided 12 by 12 that has all the colors in it with um, in the same pattern so the patterns repeat and you get plenty I think it's two of each or is that three uh, looks like maybe three three of each so that's a lot Especially if you're a card maker like me, this this packs go a long way and give you a lot of a lot of variety. So there's that. And I also will be highlighting um, one of our new uh, products from our Celebrate the Everyday catalog. But this is the project, and it's just these cute little magnets that you can put on your refrigerator to hold uh, notes or your children's art or um, pictures things like that I'm just going to tighten in really quick here so you can see them up close and so the new product that I will show you makes these cute little flowers and the size of them is just a matter of uh, how tight you um, wrap that flower so there are those I haven't put the magnets on them yet because the magnets I have are too too big I have to go get smaller ones or you can use strips of magnet so let me zoom out so for this project you will need uh, strips of paper like these here and these are cut at 3 8 inch. So here are the, my cut pieces for my clothes. And these clothes pins are very inexpensive. I got a pack of, I think it's 50 or 100, um, just for a few dollars. So you can make tons of magnets. So you will need two strips of each. This little strip here is 3 8 by 1 inch. And then this is three eighths by one and three quarters. Let me get my my little clothespin. You can see it's a simple, uh, old-fashioned clothespin. <laughs> Been around for years. Oh, and before I do that, I do want to ink these edges. So I'm going to ink them up in primrose petals. You don't have to do this. I just want to. Oops. I just like the way inking looks. You know, it really just depends on what kind of mood you're in. <laughs> Sometimes I find leaving the edges not ink just gives your uh, finished project a clean look. Whereas I think inking kind of... Um, I don't know, kind of softens the project or gives it a vintage look. So it just depends. I find that my projects, they usually take on a life of their own and they kind of tell me <laughs> what they need done or not done to them. So let me put that away. And then I'm just going to use uh, my Mono Tombow Adhesive. For this I 
if it'll come out. Oops. Ah. You know, I know this, but you should always have uh, something to squeeze your uh, glue out first and then to your project. And I usually like to do that on my craft mat because it doesn't stick. Uh, I need, I have no wipes in here because <laughs> this is actually my office and not my craft room. So I'm just going to use my finger then and rub that on like that. That'll work. The nice thing about using the mono adhesive is that you have time to move your paper around and get it just the way you want it. So I want this right up to the edge. In fact, that's more important to me than whether it's uh, even there because that's going to be covered. And then set that down just like that. You know, I'm going to have to get a wipe. This is driving me crazy. And the other thing you could do, I'm not going to do it on here, is um, I did do it on these. Get a uh, get your sander and just sand the edges, especially if you have a little overlap. But let me clean this uh, <laughs> glue off my hands, and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. That was driving me nuts, and I didn't want to mess up my project by getting sticky all over it. So let me squeeze the, there we go. I'm going to slowly, this is a new bottle too, so it's coming out pretty fast. Just going to put it all over like that. The other thing you can do is get your your bone foot. Oh, I want to make sure that's on the edge. Make sure you're all the way on the edge. Don't want that paper coming up. Just get your bone folder, is what I was going to say, and or a, uh, um, oh, what do they call them? Uh, I don't know, squeegee for that. <laughs> Lack of a better word, they sell them at Pampered Chef, and we have, we used to have them uh, when we used to sell vinyl. And you may also have something like that if you have a Cricut and the the tool kit. Um, anyway, after you let it dry just a little, you might want to just kind of go over it and make sure it's smooth and flat and that the, the uh, glue is spread all over edge to edge like that. So there's that. And now for the new, uh, before, before I show you that, I do want to show you the, the leaves here. Um, I have some already punched out and I punched them out using our bird punch. I love this punch. I use this punch so much. <laughs> um, especially the leaves and the wing. I use the wing a lot for leaves. And that's what I'm going to use today. If I can find what I did with them. Oh, see I have a few here in this package. So one of the things I did with my leaves, I'm going to take out two and get my mat. Okay, so oh, I got three. I only need two of these. So I just wanted to add some veins in there. So I took my mat and got my um, bone folder and just kind of drew a line in there. It's not perfect, doesn't have to be. Decide what side you want to use. I'm going to zoom in on that real quick. Hopefully you can see that. Um, here's the ray side. And then this is... Uh, 
I don't know, em emboss, deboss side. <laughs> I'm not really sure. I always get those terms confused. So I'm going to use, uh, I think I'm just going to use this side. I'm zoom back out and then I'm going to ink those up real quick. Okay, and now I will show you our new die. This is our Spiral Flower Originals die. There's what it looks like, if you can see that. I think you can. So I've already cut my flower out in the um, Midnight Muse. And I've also run it through my Big Shot uh, using my uh, Perfect Polka Dot Textured Impressions folder. This, I want to break down this cardstock a bit and, sh and soften it up and also give it some kind of pre-curl it so that it's easier when I um, start rolling it. So I'm just going to take my bone folder like this all the way around. And I will probably go back again the other way. I really want to break it down. And then um, just really softens up those paper fibers. Oops, but I don't want to tear it. <laughs> Plan is not to tear it. Like I just did a little bit right there, but. The other thing I like to do before rolling it is uh, curling my petals. Okay. Now, I usually use my tweezers, my tweezer bead tweezers for this. I also have a quilling tool. Um, but neither of those are here right now because <laughs> I forgot to bring them in. So I'm just going to do this by hand. Um, I like using my tweezers because it, you know, it gets it curled really tight, really tight. So, but I'll just do it by hand. See what happens. I'm just keeping that edge lined up as best I can. Okay, so, and I might just, um, oh. Now you can, you know, let it go a little loose, which is going to make a, a larger flower. And I think I kind of want it like that. And I would say it's a good, it would be a good idea um, to use hot glue, which is... I'm just going to do it like this. Ooh, that's a mess. Huh? And I'm going to hold that. I'll just hold it there. I do highly recommend that when you make this that you use a, a hot glue gun. Cause otherwise you're gonna have to sit there and hold this. So I'm gonna let this dry and I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, while I was off camera, I also went ahead and kind of fussed with my flower a bit. Um, took my bone folder to separate some of the petals and to curl it some more. And uh, you'll want to just, you know, play around with that until you get it the way you want it. 
um, curl out some of them inwards, kind of. Okay. So now I'm just going to kind of do a pre uh, test on there, like see where I want the the leaves and the flower. Let me move this mat. I want to get glue on that. Okay. So I have a pretty good idea how I want these leaves to be on here. And you know, no no two flowers are alike, so it's okay if um if this one doesn't look exactly like my other two. A little more on here. And again, uh, by using the the uh, Tombow Mono Adhesive, I do have a little time to play around with my placement. And I think I'm going to leave it just like that. Now on this one, I actually used a Stampin' Dimensional on the top, underneath the top leaf to raise it up off the bottom one. But I, I like it both ways, so it really doesn't doesn't matter. And then I'm just going to put some more on the back here. Decide which way I want it to sit on there. I think kind of like that. And press. Oops, I didn't mean to cover that leaf up that much, but that's okay. Okay, so there you are. Three little floral magnets. So I'm going to give you a close-up of that again. Those are really fun. They just take a few minutes, nowhere near as long as it's, it has taken to make this video. Um, again, I want to remind you, don't forget to get on over to Paper Pumpkin and sign up for the Paper Pumpkin monthly kit so that you can get your free 2012-2014 uh, in color markers. As you can see, they're very pretty. They're a lot of fun to work with. Um, uh, so I hope you won't miss out on that. That ends uh, February 10th, 2014. This is Saturday evening that I'm making this video. Uh, you will probably see it Saturday evening <laughs> or Monday Monday sometime I don't know um, depends on when I post it and when you watch it <laughs> um, but anyway uh, Monday is the last day so you don't want to miss out on an opportunity to get these markers for free that's in addition to the free gift that you get when you sign up and also you will be invited to join me on Pinterest at the pumpkin patch which is a private uh, Pinterest board for us to share our ideas and uh, you know what we've done with our kit each month so I'm looking forward to that and I'm looking forward to having you be a part of that so if you sign up under me Lisa Doucette um, you will definitely be welcome to join me in that and I will do monthly giveaways just for the the pumpkin patch so I hope you've enjoyed this video and as always I look forward to being with you again and I so appreciate you watching. Uh, thanks for watching.